time again for a state of play. Our favorite players are back. Jan Ting, a Newsworth contributor and professor of law at the Beasley School of Law at Temple University. Also here is Stephanie Hansen, an attorney with Young, Conaway, Stargate, and Taylor. Welcome. Let's start with the Wilmington mayor's race. Now, we're, we're about less than a month away from the Delaware primary, and it seems like the Democratic candidates for mayor are focused on crime. Do you think they're trying to scare the voters into the voting booth? That's a good, I had never, I had looked at it that way. I, unfortunately, I don't think they have to scare the voters into the voting booth. I think crime probably is the number one issue um, in the city of Wilmington, so. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's against crime, right? Everyone wants to do something about, uh, about crime. The problem is, what do you do? I mean, do you just go out and get tough on crime and, uh, and search everyone and arrest everyone? Or do you try and recognize the fact that crime is related to lack of jobs, lack of education, breakdown of family life, and uh, poverty, frankly. Um, and do you try and do something about those things besides, in addition to getting tough on crime? Uh, and, and that, I think, is, is uh, the framework of, of the debate that the mayoral candidates are having right now. And uh, part of the paradox of democracy is that, um, given a choice, voters tend to choose the person who can provide a lot of services at no, no cost, right? People, given a choice, will pick something for nothing. Uh, and uh, we see that at the national level, at the state level, and, and also at uh, City of Wilmington level. Um, and so um, that, that really is the paradox. I think uh, Bill Montgomery has been very brave to go out and say, um, you know, there is no free lunch, and uh, he wants to attack uh, crime, I think, on a, a broad broad basis and attack all the social problems that, uh, that uh, underlie the uh, outbreak of crime in the city of Wilmington. And the money's got to come from somewhere. And, you know, the other candidates can talk about, well, alternate revenue streams and, you know, cutting fraud, abuse and waste. But, you know, those are just euphemisms for saying we don't know where the money's going to come from. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's got to come from somewhere. And I think, you know, there is a constituency of people in the city that want uh, uh, to attack these problems and who recognize uh, that it's going to take money and certainly uh, there is a constituency of uh, city employees and their families who have been without pay raises for a long time and, and uh, they understand uh, the need for additional revenue. Well, you mentioned Bill Montgomery and I want to bring him up mm -hmm. because is he being honest when he talks about raising or passing a 15 percent uh, property tax? Do you think he's being honest or do you think he's committing political suicide? Well, I think he's being honest, certainly. Um, and I think probably Jan said it best when he said he's being very brave. Um, the thinking person is going to understand that and appreciate the fact that they're being upfront. He's telling me right away, this is what he expects to do. Um, and this is what he's going to use it for. And, you know, I, I think, however, he has, he has, even without that, he's going to appeal to the thinking part, really, the, the, the thoughtful kind of voter. The question is, are enough of them going to come out to overcome just the visceral, we want somebody else that's going to be straight law enforcement background is going to be tough on crime. And, and that's as much as they're thinking. That's really the question. What about you? Well, you know, part of the political reality is we're in the midst of the Great Recession, and uh, that means that assistance uh, that w might have been hoped for from the federal government or from state government uh, simply isn't there. And the city of Wilmington has got all these problems. There's never a good time uh, for a tax increase. Uh, you can't raise taxes in the middle of a recession. You can't raise taxes in the middle of a recovery or it'll stall the recovery. Uh, you can't uh, raise taxes when the economy is booming because it'll, uh, you know, destroy the uh, booming economy. Yeah. So there's never a good time. And, uh, and we're not, Jan, and we're not used to uh, po politicians being honest, right, are Right, but people are demanding <laughs> services, you know, say, hey, government's got to step up. Government's got to do something about crime. And, uh, and we don't want to pay for it, uh, but uh, government is expected to do more and more. And I think the uh, local governments, not just in Delaware, but throughout the country are, are under the gun now because that's the level where services are demanded. And uh, local government is not getting the funding that they uh, would hope for from federal and state government. And uh, they have to do something. And I think, um, you know, if politicians are honest, they have to spell out 
what exactly they're going to do. They can't just say additional funding streams and cut fraud, waste, and abuse. That's that's really not enough. Uh, not uh, before going to this next topic, but we talked a little about Dennis Williams. What do you think about him in this race? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that um, for him to just cut off the debate at this point, say 15 is enough, we're going to go out there, we're going to do something else. I think that that puts a lot of his voters at a disservice because a, a number of these debates are held by groups and entities that appeal to a certain type of constituency. The environmental debate, apparently, I mean, the, the one that just happened. I mean, there may be people that were going to tune into that that aren't going to listen to the other debates necessarily. They're not so much as interested in the topics that are covered by other entities. For him to say, nope, I'm all done talking, I, I think that that could be indicative of how he might govern in the future. And that's not a good statement. Mm -hmm. I think the mayoral race has boiled down to two front-runner candidates. I mean, Dennis Williams and, and, and Bill Montgomery. And Bill Montgomery um, is tied to the uh, current administration as former uh, chief of staff to, to Mayor Baker. Uh, and, you know, Dennis Williams, by, not, uh, by cutting off his participation in these debates, seems to be saying that he thinks the race is over. You know, that we've had the debates and we're done with that and, you know, we're pretty close to uh, the September 11th primary now and maybe it's all over. And, uh, you know, we'll find out on September 11th whether he's right or not uh, about that. Is the race really over? It's hard to poll in a, uh, in a, a district as small as the city of Wilmington, but, uh, but uh, obviously every campaign is doing what they can to see, uh, assess where they're at in their campaign. And one has to presume that the Williams campaign is saying, we don't have to do any more. Yeah, let's get on with the job of doing what the yeah. mayor's supposed to do. This is what I'm going to do. Race is mm -hmm. over. Let's, let's move on. Mm -hmm. It is a little... Um, I'm not quite sure what the word is. Yeah, you, you expect people, to, you expect politicians to campaign right up to the last moment. You know, I mean, I, I even have seen Governor uh, Markell out and about who's got, I think, an easy race, but he's out there campaigning. You know, he's sending out his literature. He says you can't take anything for granted, and everyone in politics uh, ought to know that. Yes. I want to talk about Governor Jack Markell for a bit. He's in the studio a lot. He's on MSNBC. He's on Fox, CNN. Uh, he's now the head of the Governor's Association. Is that a, a good thing for Delawareans? What do you think? I think it is. Um, Tom Carper was in the same situation as well. I mean, we have a history of, I think we have a history of turning out very good um, upper echelon elected officials. Uh, like I said, Tom was the, he was also the, the head of the National Governors Association. Mike Castle was the chair of one of the prominent committees on there. And of course we have uh, Joe Biden who goes on to be the Vice President of the United States. So um, I think, I think Delawareans, at, at first, when you first hear about it, your first instinct is, well, oh my gosh, he's looking outside of Delaware. He ought to be back in here dealing with, and so you're, that's your kind of your first visceral reaction. But um, when you kind of look beyond that, everybody recognizes that Governor Markell is a superior um, executive. He really is. And I think that his involvement in the National Governors Association will benefit that association and a much broader audience in Delaware. And we have a history of turning out superior um, elected officials. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's part of the job description for every elected official to get out there and network on behalf of their constituents. And um, I think the state of Delaware benefits from our, from our elected officials being out there uh, and networking with people from, from other states. Hey, we're a small state, you know that? And so uh, we, we can use uh, the help and assistance of people from other states. And I think uh, the governor's participation in particular in the uh, National Governors Association is great for Delaware. Um, I think Delaware people like to see our elected officials uh, participating actively and prominently uh, across uh, the country. And so, so I think it's all good. And, and needless to say, uh, it doesn't hurt uh, these elected officials in uh, building up their own name recognition. Yes, it's a great feeling to turn on the TV and see Governor mm -hmm, Jack Markell. Mm -hmm. he, he's such a pleasant person mm -hmm. to even talk to and, and to be around. Uh, let's talk about Joe Biden. He talks or have talked about foreign policy in the past. He's been in our studio. I'm sure you remember. Uh, how do we explain his sense of humor to, to people? 
Uh, you just have to know Joe. I mean, Joe is, he's, he's from a small state, but he's got a big heart, and he knows, he knows your children's names when you when you see him on the street. I mean, it's it's been a surprise to me. But he is, you just have to know Joe. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think I think Biden is kind of an acquired taste, mm -hmm. uh, and here in Delaware, we're uh, we're used to him. And I think, frankly, the country has gotten used to him. I think he's been an asset uh, to President Obama in his reelection campaign. He's been able to reach out to constituencies. You know, he's like your uh, your your favorite uncle who sometimes says crazy things, and but you understand what he's saying. And I think um, Biden has an ability to communicate with people at a at a. a you know, a very uh, common level, and uh, I think he's been very effective uh, campaigning for uh, President Obama, and uh, I think the president recognizes that, that he's an asset to the campaign. And you want to come off as a, as a personable person. You want to come off as a real individual, it seems like. Well, exactly, and no one is above committing a gaffe every now and then. It's just that when you're doing it on the national stage, mm -hmm. it's going to be, you know, projected a hundred times more, and it's going to be taken the wrong way. I think, I think a lot of the times that he, uh, something that he would say that's taken the wrong way is folks that are just being too stiff. You know, they're, they're looking for a reason to pick you know, to, to nitpick and to just pick on him because they don't like Obama. They don't, you know, they don't want to support that ticket. So they're looking for any, any reason. Right. And, and in case you hadn't heard, it's an election year. And so mm -hmm. there are people out there ready to point out uh, every uh, possible mistake uh, that, that could be made. And I think that underlies some of the, uh, some of the uh, attention that uh, the vice president has been getting.